three similar products at three distinct price points, but which one is right for you? Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. This is the first of two videos looking into signals and in this one we're only looking at the uh, part of the signal that sits above the baseboard. In part two we'll look at what goes on underneath the baseboard and more than a cursory glance at automation um, we'll look in depth at the automation and also to sync it with block detection because block detection is really how the real railway runs so we'll look into that as well. Now fitting signals to the layout I can't deny may involve the use of a soldering iron, a weapon of which may put fear into the hearts of man or railway modellers. And it's because of this, my, my poor old soldering iron, um, because of the amount of soldering I've been doing on sawdust point mode, etc, has given up the ghost. But I wanted to replace it, but there were two real options. One was made by Weller and it comes in at 370 quid. Now I really could not justify buying that type of soldering iron. That's the sort of thing that you would buy if you did soldering for a living and I understand um, why people would want that or indeed if their budgets can stretch to it why they would buy one. Sadly that's not me. So me and my friend Amazon have had a scratch around and they came up with this little beast. So here's my little choice that I found on Amazon. It's a Lon Low no Low Nove 926 LED V3 and it retails for around about 40 quid. And with it comes a little roll of solder, though it's not my choice of solder, I tend to use 6040 lead. Um, this, this really is worth noting. The lead is very flexible because I think these are silicon based leads, um, the same as the Weller. Um, but I find that the leads are forever getting in the way and they're too stiff, but this one certainly isn't. And it's got an on off switch and temperature control knob and also a locking, uh, a locking switch to lock the temperature. Now, just to prove I'm not cheating is that, you know, this is clearly cold. So what I shall do, I'll just dim the lights as I do this so you can see the temperature rise up. Is if I turn this on, this is preset to go to 400. So hopefully you can see this temperature rise. And there it goes, 150, 170, 80, 90, 200, 240, 250, 300. And now it's slowing down as it approaches 400. And I find that to be an incredibly quick warming up time. And there we are, stopping up at 399 degrees. If I turn the switch, then I can change the temperature that I want, either up or down. And I kind of, to kind of aim it at 400. Oops, so there we are. You can never get 402. Well, we'll cope with that. Um, and then put the switch back to lock and it will stay at that. And I think this is a pretty nifty soldering iron. I've got a great deal of soldering to do because I've got to solder 10 uh, tortoise point motors and each one has eight cables on it. But I should also use this um, in this forthcoming video or the next one um, as far as the signals are concerned. So if you're interested in buying yourself a little nifty workstation um, with a decent um, stowage and let's say the foam and the cleaner and a roll of solder, 40 quid. It's the, the uh, details are in the show more tab, tab down below and to be honest I get on with it fine. And the other thing worth mentioning is it comes with another five tips and some of which are very suitable for electronics work. And one final point on this solder iron before we move on is if you leave it alone for around about 10 minutes it goes to sleep and as you can see now the temperature has dropped to 200 and SLP comes on the display which is obviously quite handy it's saving power and of course it's saving the tip and to wake it you pick it up and then the temperature goes straight to rise back up to 400. Beautiful. A sound investment that one. 
Now, of course, before we start buying signals, as if you haven't bought them already, um, it's always do, worth doing a bit of research. And I use this book, British Railway Signal in 4th edition by GM Kitchenside and Alan Williams. Nice little book. And fortunately for me, produced by Ian Allen, fortunately for me, this is the 4th edition in 1978. Um, and as my layout is based around sort of 19... 68, 1974, sort of 75, then this book is an ideal reference. So you, you can go through here and see what suits you, really. And of course, some of the regulations on which signals to be in which position and that sort of blah. Right. So you're happy with what you can buy. But just before we go into the signals, I thought I would just mention signal gantries. Now, this is an old Airfix kit. Um, and it's um, sold on to Dapol, I think, the mould. And before we sort of throw this thing out, it is always think worth thinking about whether to use these cheapy gantries and cut out their lights and obviously fit working LED lights to that. And there's also this little kit here which came out from Ratio. This one's seen better times, really, from Ratio. And this is a Pratt and Truss gantry. And I made a video concerning putting two of these together for my local club and I built this one and obviously with working lights. We've had to remove it because of the, the, the actual layout's having a bit of a revamp and we've moved stuff around and I thought I'd try and take this away before it gets smashed to bits. Um, and these kits are from Ratio and they're under a fiver but they take a bit of time to put together but of course then you need to buy the signal head separately <clears throat> which takes me on to um, signal manufacturers let's say. Now for this video, I've gone for three separate manufacturers. I've gone for a high end, a budget end, and something in the middle. So where do we go? Well, I don't know if you know this, but Econ and Burko are probably, well, are they are not probably, I apologize, are the same company. One kit becomes pre-assembled, and the other one you have to put it together yourself. Not the end of the world, is it? And if you put it together yourself, of course, you can modify it slightly. So that's my budget end, I'm sorry Burko, but there we are. And my middle of the road one is going to be Traintech. Now Traintech's quite an interesting company because they do um, DCC ready stuff if you want and you can either wire it straight into your DCC bus or you can use these little legs that go in on the um, through the sleepers and wire them in that way. Um, and they come with decoders fitted or of course they come you know plain you know as in no DCC stuff, just crack on with it. And then let's say the top end, I've gone for um, a signal from Absolute Aspects. Now, there's a name to contend with. And I must thank Simon Williamson, who's a great follower of the channel and a trusted friend, um, because he, um, <laughs> he, he, he's posted me a voucher to spend with um, Matt of Absolute Aspects. And Simon, thank you very much. And I really do appreciate it. And when you see what I bought, you will be amazed by the quality. But as I said, this is the high end of things. Now here's a little three aspect uh, light from Burko. Um, and I've replaced the the steps with a, a set of brass ones because I broke those off and it also needs a couple of little hoops on the back. But hopefully you can see that um, it's not a, an outstanding piece of engineering. The cables are visible down the back, so they need a bit of grey paint on them there. But it's a it's a basic signal. And let's face facts, these things are not expensive. And if I change the signal colours over, hopefully it's now going between red and green. And if I go to yellow, you can see it works perfectly well. So there we are, a basic little C, uh, little three aspect signal from Burko. Um, what would I call it? <laughs> it's cheap and cheerful to be perfectly honest and it works just fine. Now also available from the Econ slash Burko company, which um, is worth mentioning is, is also onlinemodelslimited.co.uk, is this, uh, they do a range of feathers and this has got a curved base if you can see that, and it would then glue on top of some of the round-topped signal heads. So it would go on like that, 
straightforward and simple. And then you could just thread these cables down the, uh, the what do you call it, pipe work of the signal and glue it into place. And you'll be f shocked to know that the signal itself is 19 pounds and the feather is eight. So, you know, this is, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> This is cheap as chips really, isn't it? 27 quid for this lot. It's absolutely outstanding, but the quality isn't wonderful. But um, yeah, it's, I'm quite surprised on the quality for the price. So we've looked at this signal from Econ slash Burko and it's actually quite a nifty little signal for what it is. And it would be only fair to sort of compare like for like, but we're obviously going to go up market and also up in complexity. And this is a very similar signal from train tech. I'm not going to assemble all the ladders and everything else. I mean, that's kind of a given really, but we'll take it out and see what this one does. So what's in the packet? Well, obviously the basic signal, there's the pack of goodies with the ladder, but the basics of this, how, what it's made up of is it's a bit like the traditional old Hornby sort of train set pickups, really. This piece here slides between the rails and pulls the, in this case, DCC power, though this signal is available in DC, um, into the light to make it work. I don't like this sort of thing, and it provides two small lines here, um, meaning you can cut these off and then solder on your pickups um, to supply power to the signal. On the back, there are two small contacts which um, enables the signal to learn. When you want to give it its DCC address, you short these two out. Someone mentioned in a previous video about these things is that the best thing to do when you install them is to solder a cable on these two uh, pickups, um, a couple of cables, and drop them down under the baseboard. So if ever you need to short them together, um, to learn to give it a new signal address. You can then just put those two cables together rather than sort of scratch around pulling ballast out uh, to get to these contacts. So that's the basics of it. Power uh, is drawn in either from the two pads or you solder onto these two um, contacts here and then we teach the signal um, its DCC address. So we'll fit this to the track and give it a go. Well, here we are with the light set up on the track and on my Digitrax controller, I've set it to, to throw switch 50. So as soon as these three lights start flashing, I'll throw the switch. So if we pop these on there, nope, I want the main lights to flash. There they go and throw. So the main lights now have an address of 50. So if I throw and close them, you can see the red and the green switching. Please ignore the feather, we'll come to that. Now because I gave the lights an address of 50, if I switch 51, the yellow should come on and off. Nope, just comes on. And then if I go back to switch 50, the yellow will go off and the green and the red will come on. Great, but what about the feather, I hear you ask? I'm going to set, preset my controller now for switch 52. And if I dab this on again until the feather starts to flash. And then throw. And hopefully all is well. So switch 50 is a throw and a close. Switch 51 is a throw and a close. Switch 52, throw and a close. So switch 52 is now closed. If we go back to switch 50, we now get the red and green as you'd expect and switch 51 should bring us the amber. But if I want the feather, I need switch 52. And there we are, all, all done. And if I go back to switch 50, then it goes back to red. So those are the three different options or the three different uh, DCC addresses. So you set the first one 
and then the signal automatically sets the second one and then you need to put in the feather address to make sure that you have all your options covered. And as long as you can work your, your handset, it's a piece of cake. Well, there we are. It's quite simple, really, isn't it? There is another advantage um, to that third address to switch the, um, the feather because as your loco would come along here, there would naturally be a point here diverging off to the left, hence the left feather. But if you were to give the left feather rather than an address of 52 as I have, but the same address as your point motor here, then when you throw the point motor, clearly the feather would come on. If there was a tr straight through train, then obviously the feather would remain off and when you turn the point back, it would go off. That's an advantage. Another advantage is that because you're just doing this as, a as an accessory decoder coming straight off the track, you're not having the complexities of common anodes and common cathodes. And that's something I'll come on to in the next video because um, it's an under, under the board type um, query, let's say. Um, so, and, and today is strictly, like I say, it's, it's all above board. How bizarre. Um, and if you want to uh, control these away from the track, um, or control your signals away from the track, then naturally you would use something like a, uh, a Digitrax SE8C or a SIG M20. And these do not work with those items because the SIG M20 and the SE8C, you decide on the decoder addresses there rather than here. So clearly, an, clearly an advantage is you don't need one of those other major components. And if you're a DC modeler, then you would just naturally power it from its cables that hang down and you use those lovely things that we all find so tactile. Switches. Do you remember those? Beautiful. It's worth mentioning before we move on, that train tech signal, obviously you saw the lights go out when I was tapping the track and it's because of a bad contact. And if you're using those forks, which I wouldn't recommend, then you clearly you need to drop a piece of solder across between the rails and the pickups, as you would normally. Right, to the main event. Hand built by Matt Turner of Absolute Aspects. Comes in a pretty little box, piece of string. Um, perhaps to denote the quality of the item inside. So let's open it up and have a look. Now I do hope you're getting excited. It comes in two parts. The first part is a base section, which as you can see has a set of contacts. The second part is the signal itself. So moving on to the signal, what I have is best summed up as a thing of beauty. And if I plug it into its base unit, then I can talk you through what exactly I ordered. Now switching to my track plan, and if you can pick up that this here is the viaduct, a train would come off the, uh, off the viaduct and around here, and it would clearly have the option here to run across this slip and up into an industrial unit. Or of course it could go straight on and straight through the center tracks of the station. Or of course it could turn off and then go to probably what would be platform one, or it could come off at this double slip and run into a mail and baggage handling facility. So we have one, two, three, four options. And this is why the des design of the signal has the three feathers. It's feather one, two, and four. Now, just for reassurance, I have just phoned up Matt of Absolute Aspects to make sure I was going to wire this up correctly. And while this is a bit of a botch of cables, because what you'll end up with if you don't do it um, by means of sort of DCC control or whatever, you're going to have a rotary switch to switch on the various aspects of this signal. Um, 
How does it work? Well, the first thing you need to do really is once you've figured out the signal type you want, you get Matt to build it and then you pop this on your layer in the right position. Obviously draw around um, this dimension. So you're going to draw around that and then use a small drill, drill holes, and then obviously you'll get that hole. And then with this device here, you can then um, using sort of spacers, I would use some plastic tubing, is screw this to the bottom of the baseboard. Um, so these terminals then allow the signal then to go straight in and become flush, such as like that. Okay. It might be feasible for you to actually remove the signal when you're doing some heavy work, you know, whether you're doing some serious modifications. Um, depends on the, the, the strength of your um, bits and bobs that hold this in place. And obviously if you haven't ballasted um, around it, you could just loose ballast and then hoover it up when you want to do some real work. So that's how it is. I mentioned common negative, so I've put a negative cable in and I placed two um, positive cables in, one for the one of the uh, one for the yellow and one for the one of the roots. So if I turn this on, hopefully you should see some light. And there we have the, the second root and obviously a yellow light and that will take you into what probably will become platform one. Obviously you're going to have a positive cable going into all three root indicators, the ground signal up here and of course the option to give you a red, yellow or green. So there are loads of feeds to go in here and then obviously if you were using this in a DC uh, sort of environment you might use a small rotary switch then to switch various elements on or off. So I'll just reconfigure this wiring now and show you the ground signal. And here we have the ground signal and as you'd expect when the ground signal comes on naturally the red will illuminate at the same time. Nice and bright, very prototypical. <laughs> God I don't want to say it, but it's very prototypical. This is outstanding. And now looking at the, the terminals on the underside of the board, um, which obviously negates the need to go under, on the underside and start soldering, um, you've got a common negative, your red, your yellow, double yellow, green, uh, position light, which is my um, ground signal, and then down the other side, one, two, three, four, and five are for the various uh, feathers and other type of aspect, you know, root indicators, that sort of thing. All straightforward. Well, hopefully with your layout, perhaps this little review might come in handy. Um, the fact that, you know, you can control these feathers via a point. Um, and obviously there's three, sig three signals here at three very different price points. Let's say there's the budget, the middle of the road, perhaps, and then the hand built alternative. We talk, we talk about money, a bit vulgar, but it's, um, what was it, just under 30 quid, about 27 pounds, I think it was. And this one um, was normally around 40 pounds, but I think it's on offer at 36. And the hand-built one was 120, which you might think is a substantial sum of money. And you'd be right. But if you want something for that special um, piece of track work, then I don't really see what your point, what your alternatives are, really. There's nowhere else to go. Um, and again, I've got another um, strange bit of points and someone emailed me back and said, Charlie, have you thought about a signal for this? And he said he suggested that I, I had a route indicator with platforms one, platforms two and a goods yard. And that's on the Branchville branch, branch station area. And it never occurred to me, but what an incredibly um, diverse way of looking at things. He could see it and I really couldn't. I'd recommend all three of these products, but are they eye candy? Do you really need them? Um, you don't necessarily need anything, but I think for them to work on your layout, you know, a train goes through a red light. I mean, it should never go through a red light. And sometimes you need to make sure it doesn't. And that's what could DCC could do for you. But in a similar fashion, if you're a father and son relationship or a grandfather and grandson relationship or granddaughters, a bit sexist that, What's wrong with good old switches? Because if you want to say to your grandson, Billy, you want to take the train out of the station, but you can't because you haven't put a, you've still got a red light. B, 
Billy needs to throw a real switch and Billy would appreciate that far more than you know some suave DCC methodology of clunking points and changing lights so it's it's all about the fun and the joy of railway modeling so I would recommend all three of these I will certainly buy another one of these which I need it um, to do the Bart Silver Bank but there's nothing wrong with these kind of alternatives and again you don't need that in a DCC concept you can always have it in just DC so there we are next time it's just under the boards so we do the wiring underneath and how you can sync these things together and how to make it work but one important point I'd like you to take in and that is these aren't affiliate links no one no one's paying me to do this it's just honest reviews um, so if you, you you know I like them you know and if you like them then I suggest you buy them these are exceptional and these are quite satisfactory but these aren't affiliate links no one's going to make money out of you well, so I'm certainly not going to make money out of you buying them so I just want to clear the air there and make it a, a point of honesty really so there we go that's me off me uh, perch um, I would like to thank the people who support the channel and my patrons in particular Simon Williamson for this product and I'll see you also oh, yeah don't forget to if you'd like to become a patron there's a button there's a subscribe button and a video here and here see you in two weeks thanks a lot take care bye bye